audacity. Audacity basically means boldness. Boldness. When I look at the word peace, it puts me in the frame of mind that causes me to wonder how it is that peace really works. Because peace is a state of mind that keeps you when you're in the midst of something that is terrible. Have you ever been at home and there's a terrible storm on the outside, the winds are blowing and the rain is falling and the thunder is uh, flashing and, and the lightning is flashing and all of the different things are going on and, and, and sometimes you find that that is the best sleep in the world. You find yourself in a place of peace. Peace is so bold that it will allow you to be calm in hurricaneal conditions. Your whole world can be falling apart, but when you have peace, it allows you to be able to be kept together when you should be falling apart. You receive bad news from the doctor and and you don't know whether you're going to live, but for some reason, you still have peace. You get a letter from your mortgage company, and you know you haven't been able to make the payments, and it says that we're going to foreclose on your house, and you still find yourself at You find out that your child has broken the law and they're going to jail. And when they go to court, they say they're going to prison for some years. And you're sitting there and you find yourself at peace. You get a phone call in the wee hours of the morning and you pick it up and, and, and you hear a frantic voice on the other line and and at first you're afraid, but after they talk for a little while, sometimes you can find yourself at peace. Peace has a power that is greater than you can actually imagine. Because when you have peace, it means that you know that regardless of your circumstances or your surroundings, that it does not matter what happens, it's still going to be okay. Peace. As Jesus was talking to his disciples, he's here at a point not too long before he's going to be crucified. This is even after he had been down at Caesarea Philippi where Peter had already proclaimed that he was the son of the living God. But if you look at the text, it tells me that all the disciples still didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God. It was only Peter, if you realize in that other scripture that I was talking about, that he was the only one who articulated the fact that Jesus was the son of the living God. And it's not till here that we actually see all of the disciples basically shaking their heads like this after Jesus says, look, I've come here, uh, my God has sent me here, and I'm going back, that they begin to realize that you are truly the Son of God. And so his disciples says, finally you're giving it to us straight. You don't have to speak in parables anymore. We understand. But Jesus leaves them with such a powerful statement that falls within my spirit. And it's the one where he says to them, he says, I've told you all of these things so that you understand 
that you should be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. He says, in this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I conquered the world. What is he saying? He's saying, I want you to understand uh, you all have seen the stuff that I've gone through. He's talking to the disciples now. And you realize that I'm human just like you are human. I need sleep just like you need sleep. I cry just like you cry. I hurt just like you hurt. And I want you to understand that I've had difficulty just like you have difficulty. But I want you to realize that even in all of this that I have conquered the world. Meaning that because I'm flesh and your flesh, that you can do the same thing that I did in the flesh, even though I'm not totally of the flesh. You can do the same thing that I've done. In other words, he's telling you it is possible for you to do the same. for you to do the same thing. And they had to rewind, click and rewind, and look over Jesus' life and realize, well, you know, he didn't come from a good place. We know he's the son of God now, but, but, but he grew up in Nazareth. He was born in a barn. There's nothing about him that, that says we ought to run to him. He doesn't look like anything. He doesn't walk like anything, but there's something about him. And he had to come in that form because of the fact that it was not the way that he truly looked, but he walked in already taking on the sins of the world. Before he even died, he was already taking on the sins of the world. So he didn't look like anything. He wasn't beautiful. He he wasn't he wasn't good looking. He 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 wasn't he wasn't a Billy D or or or, or whoever you want to call. Him. He wasn't he wasn't that. And so for people to look at him and say this is the son of God, it was just like crazy. It was crazy. And so there's some things that I want to pull out place within your spirit today. Dealing with peace and with following God. The first thing is that knowledge is power. Many people suffer from the lack of knowledge because they don't study. But you will discover in this life as you grow up, if you're young or if you're old, that you still learn day by day. But knowledge is power. And, and what I mean by that is, is once, once you learn that fire burns, you stop messing with it. Once you learn that, that, that speeding was going to get you a ticket, knowledge became power. As long as you didn't get caught. When you were young and you were out there playing games and running and hiding and, and doing all of your, 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 your little stuff, you found out if you, didn't use, uh, if you didn't use birth control that you could come up with a child. Y'all don't mind if I walk in here today. But knowledge is power. You figured out that if you ate right, and you exercise that your quality of life would actually be better. Knowledge is power. That don't mean that we all do it. But knowledge is power. That means that when you get sick, you already know, well, I know exactly what's wrong. And this knowledge became powerful to the disciples because they needed to know that after Jesus left, 
that they could still have peace without him there. And so we have to, as believers, continue to gain more knowledge of God in today's world. Because in today's world, things are so different. They're so different in that, 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 that we become so technologically advanced that, that we begin to, to do everything by computer. You, you can't even walk in and fill out an application anymore. Am I in here? You, 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 can't, you can't do things the way you used to do them. You, everything is done by email or, or you, you don't even pick up the phone anymore and call people anymore. It, it's text message and, and, and it's instant message and it's all of these different technological advances that has allowed us to, to move on to another level. So we have to realize that our knowledge of God has to stay up to date just as well as our ability to use computers and technology has to stay up to date. Amen? Because as the things in the world begin to grow and begin to, to, to begin to move on, that means that I have to be able to move on that same way with Jesus Christ. My knowledge of him has to grow. My, 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 my connection to him has to grow. My, my conversation with him has to grow. My knowledge of him has to grow. I have to grow with Jesus just like I grow with the world. Knowledge is extreme power. And without knowledge, you find yourself in a place where you don't actually be able to get to the level that you want to get to. Have you ever been somewhere and you see people lining up in a line and you've gone to that place all the time and you never knew why the people lined up in this line over here? And then you finally find out, well, they line up in that line over there because if they get in that line first, they actually get served faster. And you're saying, I've been coming here for years and I never knew that. But knowledge is power. And it does not matter how technologically advanced the world gets. Peace is still peace. And God wants you to know that you can still have peace in a technologically advanced world. You can still have peace when things around you are not the way they used to be. I'm just old enough to, to know what it was to not have a cell phone and to have a cell phone. A lot of us are in that category. You, you remember when, 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 when the pager came out, people thought there was something. They were walking around. I just got a beep. You got a beep. Then, then, then they learn how to, how to send the numbers, and, and when you type the numbers in, you could, you could do the numbers in a certain way to send the message. The, I think the first one was, hello. But things advanced. And some of us, God bless us, had, you know, stayed in the same spot. We, you, you, you know, I... I still run in, 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 into some people every now and then say, you know, I, I just got this new phone and don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and they said, they just don't, they don't sell them one with the buttons no more. I said, I know. <laughs> but you have to move forward because knowledge is power. Because if you can't use a phone, you can't use an ATM machine now. And everybody got a card now. People used to didn't have a card, got a card. Because we become moneyless. So times are changing. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that if you don't advance the same way with God, in your knowledge of him, you'll find yourself just like those people who can't use the touchscreen phone with God. And so knowledge is power. The second thing I have to give you is this. 
because knowledge is power and we serve such an awesome God, we have to understand that our service to him cannot be mechanical. Because we don't serve a mechanical God. Like, what do you mean by that? You, you, you're thinking about uh, 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 mechanics. What, what I mean by mechanics is that it is not calculated. And so with your peace, you have to understand that wherever you are and whatever you're going through, that things are always changing, just like technology always changes. Your atmosphere is always changing, and so you can't always serve God the same way in an ever-changing atmosphere, in an ever-changing world, in an ever-changing place. You can't serve God the same way because while you're, while you're going this way with God, everything else is doing like this. Watch, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. So what I mean by that is that, that, that when you look at, at, at God, you realize that, that, that things are not always the same with him. When Jesus was here, who knew that when he told those men to go get those dirty water pots and fill them with that dirty water, that he was going to turn it into wine? Who knew that when he, when, when he came to, 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 to uh, Bethesda, the, the, where the porches were, that he was going to ask the man, do you want to be made whole and just heal one person? Who knew that he was going to come and walk on the water in the middle of a storm? Who knew? Because things were ever changing. Even when the disciples were in the boat in the storm and Jesus was in the boat, they didn't know what was going to happen. They woke him up saying, help us get the water out of the boat. He stands up and says, peace be still. Who knew that the winds and the waves were going to hear his voice? It's always changing. Therefore, you can't be mechanical with your connection to God, what do I mean by that? We can't always be the same. Because you're not always going to be in a place where you're going to be able to kneel down and bow your head and say your sentence prayer. You're not always going to be in a place where everything is going to be done the way that you're used to doing it. Sometimes you got to change it up and realize that God is changing, the world is changing, that we need to be able to move with the changes. Because one day God might put you on your back and you have to be able to pray to him while you're on your back. You might have to be able to pray to him while you're on your side. You might have to be able to pray to him while you're diving down through traffic. So you can't always be the same and mechanical with God. Your response can't always be the same. Now you just have to catch myself. Because when I got up, it was the same prayer. When I sat down to eat, it was the same prayer. Before I walked out the house, it was the same prayer. And so I realized, I said, my worship to God is becoming mechanical. My response to him is becoming mechanical. Meaning that I can't be ready at all times for when, for when he comes in. I, I, I can't be ready to respond in a different way. See, your, your response only changes when your, atmosphere cha when your atmosphere changes to a place where you're uncomfortable and you find yourself having to call on his name, but you, you're, 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 you're in such an uncomfortable place, you don't even feel right calling on his name in the place that you're in because you can't get in the position that you're used to being in when you call upon his name. So you can't be mechanical good with God. You, you got to be real with God. You got to be ever changing. You got to be ever moving with God. Because as your atmosphere changes, you have to be able to respond to him wherever you are. See, I discovered that. Discovered that at a young age. 
when we were in that car accident many years ago, I discovered that. When that car started flipping, I didn't have time to stop and say, now I lay me down to sleep. I didn't have time to stop and say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I didn't have time to do anything. All I could say was Jesus. And I have to get to, you have to get to a point in your life where we're saying Jesus is enough. You have to be able to be satisfied. If I can just utter his name, it's enough. If I can just articulate the name Jesus, it's enough. And if I can't speak, if I can think his name, it's enough. If I can hum his name, it's enough. Mm -hmm. If I can see his name in my mind and just write it, it's enough. Because I can't be mechanical with God. Especially when life is breaking all around me. I can't be mechanical with God. So I've got to learn how to be at peace. And be able to serve him in a way that's more than just mechanical. Because if you're here just because it's the Sabbath, you've missed the mark. If you pray over your food just because you were told that's what you ought to do, you missed the mark. So we have to understand that it goes beyond that. Have you actually ever been on the day where you prayed throughout the day? And you were okay. You, 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 you know, sometimes people say, well, I didn't actually pray because I didn't close my eyes. You have to be in a place to know that I can communicate with God without having to close my eyes. I can communicate with God while I'm sitting there at work. I can communicate with God while I'm driving down the road. I can communicate with God wherever I am. I can communicate with God in the store. I can communicate with God in the street. I can communicate with God while I'm cutting the grass. Because in a time of trouble, we won't have the same things that we have today. We won't have the same luxuries that we have today. We may not be able to come into an air-conditioned, heated building with a roof on it and lights and still be able to worship him. We might have to be in the highways and the byways. We might have to be in the woods somewhere. We may have to be worshiping him down at the campground with no power. You, you have to be ready to worship him in regardless of the circumstances. So I have to realize that it's not mechanical. And so when I finally get to a place where I understand and realize that God's peace is over me and that I don't serve him the same way all of the time, that I just, I, 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 I go in and and, and, and when I pray, I know that, I, that, that he hears me whether my eyes are closed or shut. When I get to that point, when I get to the point where, where I don't have to, where, where I realize that tradition is, is sometimes not, not what I need. I need to be able to serve God beyond tradition. Because a lot of us serve God simply because of tradition. We're, a lot of us are here because you, you might be second, third, fourth, fifth generation, seventh day Adventists. Some of us are new believers. But you can't just be here because of the fact of what you've read or what you heard. You got to believe it. It's got to be in you. It's got to be part of you. And so when you get to this point and you've realized who God is, 
And you realize that his peace is over you. And it doesn't matter where you are, what situation you're in, that he's already in control of it. You can tell the devil to bring it. Some of y'all missed that. What I mean is this. The devil is already coming after you. He's already seeking to destroy you. But once you know that you're covered by the blood, once you know that God's peace is over you, and that he can't do nothing to you without permission, just tell him to bring it. Because I already know you're coming. Bring it. Just like David did with Goliath. David already knew the power of God. So when he came up to Goliath, he was like, Goliath, all I got is my slingshot and five smooth stones. Bring it. Doctor tells you you're sick. You might not get well. You know that you're covered by the blood. You tell the devil, bring it. Job acting up, you think you might be about to lose your job and you don't know where you're going to go to fill out another application, tell the devil, bring it. You find yourself in a situation where it doesn't seem like you'll be able to go right or left and you know that the devil is just trying to mess up your life. You tell the devil, just bring it. Because regardless of what he does, and regardless of how he tries to push you around, and regardless of how he tries to knock you down, God says, I got you covered. My peace is already on you. It does not matter if the devil tries to trip you while you're walking up these here stairs. God says, I got you covered. My peace is upon you. When you learn that his peace is upon you, you're able to function in a world that is messed up and still be at peace. Because you know that regardless of the circumstance, that you are still going to go in the direction that God has sent you. That whatever happens in your life is what's already ordained if you've already prayed and asked God to lead you. Because he says, his peace is over you. Whichever direction you go, I got you. Because my peace is upon you. My peace is upon you. And so the last thing I have to realize is that my mess is going to become my message. Because I know I'm covered. I know his peace is upon me. And so whatever I'm in if it looks like a mess, it must be my message. That's what happened to Jesus. His mess became his message. He was born in a manger. His mess became his message. He had to walk around this world and not have all of the power that he wanted to use in his hand. His mess became his message. He who knew no sin became sin. And he took on all of our sins and all of our iniquities. 
And his mess became his message. So he was beaten and he was bruised. And his mess became his message. He was talked about and he was scorned. His mess became his message. Your mess will become your message. 